Okay, so I am Carter, and the other guy is Kelly. He has an art space, and he's going to look at his guy later. And for some reason, I have a wooden sword, and he has a diamond one. I don't see why, but whatever. So anyways, this is our Minecraft video. We chose to record just response to the house on Mango Street. And we chose to it partly because it would be a lot easier to time if we could just record a video. But also partly because this way we can, like in Minecraft, you can build a lot more than you could with, say, clay. Because it's a lot easier to actually build stuff and you can add in a lot more variety. So, like, we could we can build this much because we're using Minecraft if we use, like, clay or paper or whatever. We couldn't do anywhere near this much stuff. So... Obviously, this is like a full city block. There's a lot of just space left out. There's a lot of just space in general. It's just the street and some buildings we thought were important to put in. We ha we got rid of a lot of stuff that would normally be there, but isn't because we just couldn't put that there. And there's a lot more kind of just stuff we put in for a symbol for the symbolic importance for the symbolic importance. Like for example, over here where I'm looking right now, there's a rainbow that's not. Obviously not in the book, but it has symbolic importance. I will explain later. So off to the red house. Yes. Now we have a quote prepared for the red house, which is the house on Mango Street, as they call it. And I will read that quote right now. It's from page four. But the house on Mango Street is not the way they told it at all. It's small and red, with tight steps in front and windows so small you'd think they were holding their breath. Bricks are crumbling in places, and the door is so swollen you have to push hard to get in. There is no front yard, only four little elms in the city planted like the city planted by the curb. That's just a little quote that we really use to kind of uh, build it, honestly. And into the house. Huh? And to introduce the house. Yeah, and, and generally introduce it. Okay, so obviously, like I said before, there's some stuff that we really couldn't do, like here. The windows aren't, like on the ground floor at least, the windows aren't as small, aren't as kind of small as they make it out to be. Which was, in all honesty, because we weren't reading directly from the text when we were building this house. And in Minecraft, you really can't do a like sworn front door, just one size fits all. And there's a lot more stuff we put on just because we thought it was appropriate. Like here, you'll see this in a couple other houses. Sometimes where the windows are, instead of having these glass panes, You'll see these fences. I will set this one on fire so you know what I'm talking about. Actually, never mind. For some reason, my my bow's not working. Yeah, I I'm looking at it. They can see it, Carter. I can't set it on fire. Anyways, that's kind of just show places where the owners of the house just decided to board up the windows. They were thinking some of the ones of we don't really have the money to fix it. We're just nailing up a board here, and it kind of shows that people just don't have the energy to fix your house. Like, it's not the house they want. They don't really care about it. They're kind of pressed for money, so they're not going to bother fixing the windows. And then, if we're actually going to start the book, there'd be stuff like this a lot more, just like places where they decide that, where the family had decided that they just didn't care enough about the house to fix it and just patch stuff up really badly. Yes, just so you guys know, these are the four tree elm trees that were mentioned in the story. They took us forever to build. For some reason, we were building them. For some reason, one of us would always be messing around, and it would always seem to end with us having to run that out. Like, sometimes just a big tree planted and we had to destroy it, or Kayla set on fire and it was trying to kill me, or I just destroyed enough that I already started over. It took us forever. Yeah. So, yeah, here's the way up to the dream house. Like I mentioned earlier, this is the rainbow. I'll be here said it's not in the book, but we built it for a kind of symbolic value. Like, traditionally, like, in Irish stories and just stories in general, there's always a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Like, people generally take that to mean whatever you really want. Like, the thing that you really want to have, the thing that you want most that'll make your life amazing, in this case, for the family, your kind of stereotypical American family dream house, like the one you always think of when you hear the, the dumb American family insurance thing. And it's at the end of the rainbow, and I think people chose to have rainbows represent that. For two reasons. First of all, they're like bright and colorful, kind of, and just hopeful in general. Like, you look at them and you feel more hopeful. Like, you think that you might just finish your homework on time or find the $10 bill or whatever. And also because they're illusions. Like, they always look like they're kind of at the edge of your field of vision. And no matter how much you follow them, you can never get to the end or really the beginning, for that matter. It's like you're for the same way. 
they know that's what the, when they, on the dream house so like and they can see the kind of rainbow going up to it but they can never go get to the end no matter how hard they try now let's go up the rainbow bridge all right we have a quote prepared for this house as well it is also on page four they always told us that one day we would move into a house, a real house, that would be ours for always so we wouldn't have to move each year. And our house would have running water and pipes that worked, and inside it would have real stairs, not hallway stairs, but stairs inside like the houses on TV. And we'd have a basement and at least three washrooms, so when we took a bath we wouldn't have to tell everybody. Our house would be white with trees around it, a great big yard and grass growing without a fence. This was the house Papa talked about when he held the lottery ticket, and this was the house Mama dreamed up in the story she told us before she went to bed. So yeah, that kind of sums up what uh, we've made here. It's a whitish house, I mean, as much as you can do in Minecraft, and... Yeah, if you have something that's all white, like all of this stuff here, it looks really bad in general. And yeah. because it was a floating island... We couldn't have it as easy like it to overshadow too much and kind of dominate the town even more than an art does. So we couldn't really do the trees on the side. We couldn't make the front yard as big as we wanted to. But it kind of shows what it means. So, like, there's just a nice front yard without any grass and nice big windows. Just a nice house in general. Like, you could see yourself living there. Where is it next? Uh, Meme Ortiz's house. Meme. Get it right, Kelly. It's pronounced Meme. It's pronounced Meme. Meme. It's meme, Kayla. I deal with it. All right. And uh, this is meme's house. Carter, I'll let you explain that as I get the quote ready. Just explain the house from the outside. Okay, yeah, this is meme's house. It's just a person who lives near, who lives near the kind of main family, Esperanza and her family. And they're about in the same condition as they are. There are too many people. They don't have really have any money. So as you can see, a lot of boarded up windows just like on this house where they just decided that you cannot fix it. And then in this one, there was a lot more stuff than in the other one. Where they, like in the book that we couldn't fit in here, like there's a huge staircase leading up there, leading up to the house in the book. We couldn't put that there because it looked kind of ridiculous. And we can't put in the for floors either because you can't do that in Minecraft. Quote, Kayla. Yes. I have the quote right here. Kathy's father built the house Meme moved into. It is wooden. Inside, the floor slant. Some rooms uphill, some down. And there are no closets. Out front, there are 21 steps, all lopsided and jutting like crooked teeth. Made that way on purpose, Kathy said, so the rain will slide off. And when Meme's mama calls from the doorway, Meme goes scrambling up 21 wooden stairs with the dog with two names scrambling after him. And that is on page 22. Yeah, and it's pronounced me and Kayla. Dude, show your buttons. Fine. Um, wait, we do have to explain the tree, though. We okay. almost forgot about the tree. Here's the giant tree in the backyard. Kayla, did you read the quote about it? Um, maybe? If not, I can find that. Well, we don't really need it. It's basically a big yeah. tree in the backyard. There's just a giant back. There's just a dirt backyard, kind of like here, and there's this huge tree in it. In this case, it's an outdoor in the house. How did this thing get so big? It's kind of ridiculous. Dude, just don't question it's, the will of Minecraft. And there's a lot of stuff just stuck in there. You can easily imagine that. And then they chose this to be for the first annual Tarzan jumping contest. Meme won and broke both his arms. Now off to Gil's structure box. Yes. Oh, oops. Oh, cow. Can I come over here? I don't need to see this. Um, let's, oh. let's talk about the cow later and get oh, to gosh. Gil's furniture. Yeah, the cow's dead. Okay, I'm coming back over. You're, you're mean to the cows. You think? All right, so here's Gil's oh. furniture. Carter, you get over here. Sorry. Explain it, and I will get that coat ready. It's just a giant furniture store. It's big and sprawling. It has a lot of just random stuff everywhere. Now, there's a lot of stuff like the TV set you couldn't build in Minecraft, and you couldn't make it as big as it made it out to be in the book because we had limited time and resources. But we did our best, and it's not that bad. All right. We only have furniture, but meh. 
Yeah. Also, you can really sex them and hug each other because it looks ridiculous when you got my cap, but still. Yep. So here's the quote on page 19. There's a junk store. An old man owns it. We bought a used refrigerator from him once, and Carlos sold a box of magazines for a dollar. The store is small with just a dirty window for light. He doesn't turn the lights on unless you got money to buy things with. So in the dark, we look and see all kinds of things, me and Nanny. Tables with their feet upside down, and rows and rows of refrigerators with round corners and couches that spin dust in the air when you punch them. And a hundred TVs that don't work, probably. Everything is on top of everything, so the whole store has skinny aisles to walk through. You can get lost easy. So that is the quote. And there, this is his warehouse. It has more running jump. You can actually go in there. It's just keep out, so we can't get in. Sorry, people, it's locked. Not our fault. <laughs> we definitely didn't build it like that or anything. No, nope, not at all. But actually, we really just build that because this is the place where we keep all the random junk, like, for example, the TVs that no one's really interested in buying. And we decided to trip move them from the store to the warehouse. Because you'd think stuff would have gone to a warehouse, especially if you have those random stuff that no one wants. And it's a really ugly building. It just built for use and nothing else. No one put, no one put any effort into making it look nice. So where to now? The church? Um, the school and the church. You know what I mean. Yes. So okay, there is I'm really... Okay, I guess about the on fire again. What? Why are you... Okay. Do you... <laughs> Why? Look, there isn't really a quote for the church. I mean, the school, sorry. Because, um, the only time it's mentioned in the book is when, uh, she... It's, it's not throws a fit about not being able to eat their lunch. Yeah. So, we just, uh, built a little school. It's... Designed off of an old school building I went to because they don't have the description in the book. There's a giant bell tower, and there's a mess hall, and there's a schoolroom. They can each hold, like, the mess hall and the schoolroom can hold about, like, 10 or 20 to 10 people comfortably, and they're supposed to hit about 500, have about 500 people. And now you can do the honors of explaining the church. For, yeah, come up here with me. Yes, I am. So just like all churches, it looks like a cross. I guess we can tell they are. Yeah. This is the roof with the actual cross on it. This is the other place where the priest preached from. These things are like just side side bits where people each one there's glass paneling so people with babies can stay in there not in everyone else. And this is the entrance. Here's the parking lot. Every church has one. It seems really big until you actually go there for a mass and you realize it's not full enough. There's always some idiot parked right in here in the worst possible place walking everyone. Yeah, sure, that's true to the school. And then here, we're going to the bar where Franti sees... Sorry, not Franti. Thing about Tree Girls in Brooklyn where Esperanza sees the creepy old guy who offers Rachel power. And then, yeah, Kelly, you explain this one. Right, so here we have the bar. As Carter said, this is where the... Um the old guy offered to kill a dollar if she would kiss him. And it's just a standard bar. It has, like, the stained windows you can't really see inside so well. Um, so, yeah, here are the apartments. Yeah, how about we edit that part out? Like, my filler with the catapults? Okay, well, now they know that we edited that out, but whatever. Come Maybe on. Let's edit all of that out. And cut in back here. Five, four, three, two, one, or two. Oh, I can't, not up here yet. Dude, just... Oh, come on. Had a full thing. Okay, perfect. I'm right. All right, yeah, and perfect. so here You're are the so. apartments. Since they never really mention much in the book, they're just, like, they mention that there are apartments. They never go inside or see like anyone really does stuff there. We just decided to make them kind of closed. There's nothing on the inside. If you look in the windows, you see black. Yeah, so the one here on the end of the street, that's where they throw the people who pass out at the bar. So whenever someone passes out in the bar, they just throw them in here and take all their stuff. So they wake up with literally nothing in that apartment building. What a nice, civil town that respects the law. Huh, Kayla? Yeah, whatever you say. <laughs> Alright, so that's basically it. I mean, there's... Would you stop flinging me on things? 
Fine. Where are you, anyways? By the bar, here. Oh, there you are. Yeah, so, um, that's basically all for the... Dude! That's basically all for the apartment building. Much. And now let us move on to the general store. Yeah, let's start with this bit here. This here, you know how convenience stores always have like the small drugstore thing that they manage to keep separate for some reason? This is the drugstore. This is where you go to get drugs. Yay! Definitely legal. Because this town respects the law by throwing drunk people in an empty apartment building and stealing their stuff. That's what the store. So their shelves is actually one of the only is like the only way to make stack stuff in Minecraft look good. And this is a here's the cashier's the cash register place. And here are the scanners to make sure people aren't taking anything that they somehow have in like the nineteen what like nineteen sixties. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think these are scanners. I think they're just decorative. Quiet, door things. And here's the refrigerated area. This is where you go to freeze your butt off. No, you don't freeze stuff in here. This is where they keep the milk. Quiet, Kelly. The ice cream. And, oops. Yeah. And up here is where the owner lives. Like, there's always a kind of second floor where he keeps all his stuff. So apparently, he just said that he was going to be cheap, and just and just live there too. Yeah. 